is a 0.1 molar solution of potassium chloride. This is a 0.1 molar solution of nitric acid. This is a 0.1 molar solution of magnesium nitrate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of copper nitrate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of potassium dichromate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of potassium chromate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of chromium 3 chloride. This is a 0.1 molar solution of manganese chloride. This is a 0.1 molar solution of potassium permanganate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of iron 3 chloride. This is a 0.1 molar solution of sulfuric acid. This is a 0.1 molar solution of iron 2 sulfate. This is a 0.1 molar solution of iodine. This is a 0.1 molar solution of potassium iodide. This is a 0.1 molar solution of hydrogen peroxide. We put a 0.1 molar solution of magnesium nitrate in the test tube. We're going to add a piece of copper wire to the test tube. No reaction occurs. The magnesium ion cannot oxidize the copper. We have a 0.1 molar solution of copper to nitrate. We're going to add some magnesium ribbon to it. In a short period of time, we start to see the formation of a reddish-brown solid. The copper ion is capable of oxidizing the magnesium metal to magnesium ion. We're going to put some 0.1 molar sodium sulfite in the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of barium chloride to the solution. We get a precipitate of barium sulfite. We will now add some 6 molar hydrochloric acid. The barium sulfite almost completely dissolves. The sulfite ion is the conjugate base of the weak acid, sulfurous acid. Adding the strong acid converts the sulfite ion to sulfurous acid, and the solid dissolves. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium sulfate to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of barium chloride. We form a precipitate of barium sulfate. We're going to add some 6 molar hydrochloric acid. The solid does not dissolve. Sulfate ion is the conjugate base of the strong acid sulfuric acid. Barium sulfate will not dissolve in an acidic solution. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium sulfite to the test tube. We're going to add some 6 molar 
hydrochloric acid to the test tube to make the solution acidic. We're going to add a couple of drops of 0.02 molar potassium permanganate to the solution. The purple color disappears rapidly, indicating that the permanganate ion has been reduced. The sulfate ion is being oxidized to sulfate. We're going to test for the presence of the sulfate by adding a few drops of barium chloride. We get a, precipitate, a white precipitate of barium sulfate formed, confirming the oxidation of sulfite to sulfate. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium sulfite to the test tube. We're going to add some 6 molar hydrochloric acid to the test tube to acidify the solution. We add some orange potassium dichromate to the solution. The solution turns green. The dichromate ion is being reduced to green chrome plus 3, which indicates that the sulfite ion is being oxidized from sulfite to sulfate. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium sulfite to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of hydrochloric acid to acidify the solution. We're going to add a few drops of chlorine bleach. We're going to add a few drops of barium chloride. The formation of the barium sulfate indicates that the chlorine bleach has oxidized the sulfate to sulfite. The chlorine in the bleach is being reduced to chloride ion. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium sulfite to the test tube. We'll add a couple of drops of 6 molar HCl. We're going to add a few drops of concentrated 16 molar nitric acid. We'll add a few drops of barium chloride. We get a precipitate of barium sulfate formed, which indicates that the sulfite has been oxidized to sulfate by the nitric acid. The nitrate ion is the oxidizing agent. We're going to put some 0.1 molar chrome 3 chloride in the test tube.
we're going to add a little bit of 6 molar sodium hydroxide. We're going to add 6% hydrogen peroxide. The solution turns from green to a yellow-orange color, indicating that the chrome plus 3 has been oxidized to chrome 6 in the form of either chromate or dichromate. The hydrogen peroxide has been reduced to water. We're going to add some 0.1 molar potassium chromate to the test tube. We're going to acidify the solution with some 6 molar nitric acid. This converts the chromate to dichromate. We're going to add hydrogen peroxide to the solution. We can see the evolution of gas, hydrogen peroxide is being oxidized to oxygen and water. The solution is turning from orange to a blue-green color, indicating that the chromium has been reduced from a plus 6 oxidation state to either a plus 2 or plus 3 oxidation state. We're going to add some iron 3 chloride to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of potassium thiocyanate to the test tube. The iron plus 3 ion and the thiocyanate ion react to form a reddish orange complex ion. This is a definitive test for the presence of iron plus 3 ion. We're going to add some potassium ferricyanide to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of iron 2 ammonium sulfate to the test tube. We get the formation of a blue solid which is a positive test for the presence of iron plus 2 ion. We're going to add some iron 2 ammonium sulfate to the test tube. We're going to acidify the solution with a few drops of 6 molar sulfuric acid. We're going to add a few drops of potassium permanganate. The different disappearance of the purple color indicates that the permanganate is being reduced. And it's being reduced to manganese plus 2. The iron plus 2 is being oxidized to iron plus 3. We can test for the presence of the iron plus 3 by adding some thiocyanate ion. We get the formation of the red complex between the iron plus 3 and the thiocyanate. We're going to add 
some 0.1 molar iron 2 ammonium sulfate to the test tube. We're going to add some 6 molar nitric acid. We're going to add some potassium thiocyanate. The reddish color indicates that the iron plus 2 has been oxidized to iron plus 3. The nitric acid is the oxidizing agent, and the nitric acid is being reduced. We're going to add some iron 2 ammonium sulfate to the test tube. We're going to acidify the solution by adding some 6 molar sulfuric acid. We're going to add a solution of potassium dichromate. We can see that the orange color disappears and we're getting the formation of a green color. This indicates that the chrome 6 oxidation state is being reduced to the chrome 3 oxidation state. We'll add some potassium thiocyanate. The formation of the red color indicates that we've oxidized the iron from plus 2 to plus 3. We're going to add some 0.1 molar iron 3 chloride to the test tube. We're going to add some potassium iodide to the solution. The formation of the orange color indicates that we're oxidizing the iodide to the iodine. The iron plus 3 is being reduced to iron plus 2. We can test for the presence of iron plus 2 by adding a few drops of potassium ferricyanide. The formation of the blue solid indicates that we've reduced the iron plus 3 to iron plus 2. We're going to add some 0.1 molar um, iron 2 ammonium sulfate to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of sulfuric acid to acidify the solution. We're going to add a few drops of chlorine bleach. We're going to add some potassium thiocyanate. The appearance of the red color indicates that the iron plus 2 has been oxidized to iron plus 3. The bleach has been reduced from hypochlorite ion to chloride ion. We're going to place some iron 3 chloride in the test tube. We're going to add some 0.1 molar 10,2 chloride. We're going to add some potassium ferricyanide. The formation of the blue solid indicates that the iron plus 3 has been reduced to iron plus 2. The 10 plus 2, in turn, has been oxidized to 10 plus 4.
we're going to add some 0.001 molar iodine in water to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of sodium thiosulfate to the test tube. We're going to add some silver nitrate. The disappearance of the iodine color indicates that the iodine has been reduced. The formation of a yellow solid on the addition of silver indicates that iodide ion has been formed. The iodine has been reduced to iodide. We're going to add some 0.001 molar iodine solution to the test tube. We'll acidify it with a few drops of 6 molar HCl. We're going to add some 6% hydrogen peroxide. We're going to add some silver nitrate. The formation of the solid indicates the presence of iodide ion. I'm going to add some 0.1 molar potassium bromide to the test tube. I'm going to acidify it with a few drops of 6 molar HCl. I'm going to add a few drops of chlorine bleach. The formation of the reddish color indicates the formation of bromine. The bromide ion is being oxidized to bromine. The hypochlorite ion is being reduced to chloride. I'm going to add a small amount of hexane. Bromine produced dissolves in the hexane to produce a reddish solution. We're going to put some 0.1 molar potassium iodide in the test tube. We're going to acidify it with a few drops of 6 molar HCl. We're going to add a few drops of chlorine bleach. The formation of the reddish brown solution and some solid indicates the presence of iodine. To further test for the iodine, we're going to add some hexane. we stir the solution, the iodine dissolves in the hexane. The formation of a purple hexane layer confirms the formation of iodine. The iodide ion was oxidized to iodine. The hypochlorite ion was reduced to chloride ion. We're going to add some 0.1 molar potassium iodide to the test tube. We're going to add a few drops of an aqueous solution of bromine. The appearance of a reddish color solution indicates the formation of iodine. We're going to add some hexane 
to confirm the formation of the iodine. If we stir the solution, the hexane layer turns purple, which indicates the formation of iodine. The iodide ion has been oxidized to iodine. The bromine has been reduced to bromide. We're going to add some 0.1 molar sodium nitrate to the test tube. The solution is neutral. We're going to add a few pieces of copper wire to the test tube. Nothing happened. The nitrate ion is not a very strong oxidizing agent in neutral solution. We're going to add some 6 molar nitric acid to the test tube. We're going to add some copper wire. We start to see the rapid evolution of gas. The nitrate ion is a much stronger oxidizing agent in acidic solution than neutral solution. The nitrate ion is being reduced to NO and NO2 gas. The copper metal is being oxidized to copper plus 2. We can start to see the formation of the blue copper plus 2 ion.